In the last session, we talked about simple random sampling. And in this session, we are going to talk about stratified random sampling. Now, what happens when you have a population that has got subgroups in it? For example, one group may be large, other group may be medium sized group, and one other group may be very small. Now, there is a danger if you use simple random sampling. Now, the large group may have the largest representation. Followed by the medium and then the small groups or small groups may not have any representation at all. Now, in order to cater for such situation, what we need to do is we need to do our sampling by these groups. Now, technically, these groups are referred to as strata. That is your plural and stratum is your singular. So, you do simple random sampling in each of these groups. I'm going to practically look into how to do this when you've got or when you intend to do stratified random sampling for your research. The ultimate objective of stratified random sampling is to give all the groups that are in your population adequate representation in the final study or in the sample. Now, the example that I'm taking is very simple. Let's say I'm doing my research in a higher education institution. And that institution offers different programs. It offers bachelors. It offers masters. And it offers PhD programs. Now, normally in a university, bachelor's programs are the ones that have got most number of students, followed by master program and then by PhD. Now, if I go for simple random sampling and I've got all my or the list of all the students, well, there is a very higher chance that most of my sample will consist of bachelor level students, followed by master and then by PhD or there may not be any PhD whatsoever. If you have got, let's say, 100 bachelor level students or 1000 bachelor level students, 300 master level students, and just say, let's say, 20 PhD students. And I'm taking a sample of, let's say, 300 people. So I might not have any PhD whatsoever in the final sample. And this is wrong. I need the representation of PhDs as well because their input might matter in deciding the practices or procedures for higher education institutions. So in this case, what I need to do is I divide my population into three subsamples or three subpopulations, let's say. And that subpopulation in each one of them, I'll do my simple random sampling. How to do this? Let's practically look into it. So I've got my strata here and let's say it's bachelor level students, master and PhD. And here is the count. Let's say in the bachelors I've got 1000, in the masters I've got let's say 500 and in PhD let's say I've got 50. And the total number of students that I've got is 1550. My sample size requirement is, let's say, 300. So my sample size requirement is 300. My total population is 1550. Now the first step when you are doing your stratified random sampling is to find out the proportion or percentage. So let's say, What's the percentage? 300. So how much is 300 of 1550? Like what is the percentage of 300 in 1550? So how to do this? 300 divided by 1550 multiplied by 100. 
add n is equal to so it's a formula so that is 19 percent so 300 is actually 19 percent of 1550 or otherwise what you can do is let's see it a different way so here is your 300 divided by total multiplied by 100 so if you change your total here and sample requirement here you will have the percentage so 19.35 percent so i will need a 19.35 percent from bachelors 19.35 percent from masters and 19.35 percent from phd how to do this simply is equal to here is b2 what's the 19.35 percent of Bachelors B2 multiplied by the percentage divided by 100 and here it is 193. Similarly, you can drag it and look at this. So B2 so here is B3. So it's changing its B7, it should be B7 rather than B8. Again, B7. That's it. So now you've got a proportionate stratified random sampling, that is, proportionate representation based on the sample size required, that is, the percentage of your sample size required from the total sample 19.35, 19.35, 19.35. The issue is that do you think that if you just access 193 people or let's round it off to 194, you are going to get 194 responses? No. So what I'll do is rather than going with the exact same requirement, I'm going to increase my sample size. The people that I access, let's say I access 300 here. Let's say I access 150 here. And let's say I access 25 here. So just to make sure that I'll, I will need the minimum sample size requirements for each group. Furthermore, let's say this is actually we, we can call it proportionate stratified random sampling. There is another form as well, disproportionate stratified random sampling. Now what I'll do is I'll change the proportions my, on my own. Instead of 193 here, because this is too high and this is too low. So what I'll do is I'll try to change it and instead of 193, let's say if I get 150 from here and let's say, let's keep it to 100 and let's say, okay, let's say we do 175 here and let's say 25 here. Now I'm getting a more adequate response from PhD as well. Obviously, you can target more here. So this is this disproportionate stratified random sampling because you have changed the proportions. Now, there is one more step to understand. How do I access these? Again, the same procedure that we did with simple random sampling. Now, each of these become a population from which the sample is drawn. So let's say I've got the list of bachelor level students here. Let's say I've got the list of master level students here. And let's say I've got the list of PhD level students here. To access bachelor level students, how many bachelor level students do I need to access? I need to access at least 300 to make sure that I get my minimum sample size requirement fulfilled. So what I'll do is I'll come to this random number generator and how many students am I, am I going to access? 300. What's the minimum value and maximum? The minimum and maximum value means for simple random sampling, obviously I need the list of all my students that I'm going to access. So here is the list of 300 students. Or let's say, here's the list of all these bachelor level students, sorry, not 300, but 1000 students here in the Excel sheet. So from 1000, I need 300 students. So minimum value is one, the maximum is 1000. And I need numbers, minimum maximum, allow duplicates, no, sort results, no, so 300. Here are the 300 numbers. So, which student shall I access? So, I'll access 36, 964, 859, 
So let's say here, where is 36? Here is 36. Here it is. Have a look. So this is your 36. Assume this is your 36. So I'm just going to send an email or maybe uh, a postal questionnaire, howsoever you want to do it. You are going to send your questionnaire to this person. Next, 964. Next, 859. So on and so forth. So you are going to send 300 questionnaires to whom? To all these people. Now this also bachelor. Similarly, you can do it for masters as well. How many master students? One to five hundred, and we need one fifty numbers. So, so to make sure that we get at least hundred responses. Again, go back up. So we need one fifty from one to five hundred because I've got five hundred master level students, and here it is. Here are your one fifty numbers. Similarly, you can do for PhD and then access them. So this is how you can do stratified random sampling. If you think, again, the requirement is that you have to have the population a frame. Again, the requirement is that you need to have all the details of your population so that you can draw a sample out of it. If you do not have the means to access every element in the population, you are not able to select them as a subject in the sample then you cannot do simple random sampling neither you can do stratified random sampling thank you very much